What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we're checking out the new 27-inch iMac with a 5K Retina display for 2015. This video is part of Awesome Stuff Week here on YouTube, and what better way to celebrate Unboxing Day than an unboxing of the newest 5K iMac, which is the heart of my YouTube production. So the Retina display is now available across the entire 27-inch iMac lineup. That starts you off at $17.99. We also get new Skylake processors, faster storage and RAM, in addition to new AMD Radeon R9 graphics processors. We also get new backlighting for the 5K display, which improves the color gamut, so you're able to see more reds and greens than before. Now the iMac we're looking at here is my main production machine, so I went all out, just like the model from last year, which we're gonna compare to. So I went with the four gigahertz Core i7. I'm going with eight gigs of RAM because we're gonna upgrade our own RAM here, which is really easy and much more affordable. If you wanna get 32 gigs of RAM, you'll have to spend $600 through Apple, I can do it much cheaper and I'll show you a bit later. I also went with a three terabyte fusion drive, which combines an SSD plus three terabytes of hard disk storage, which speeds up performance, but gives you a lot of storage space. I also went with the AMD Radeon R9 M395X with four gigs of video memory. So getting to the unboxing, this is gonna be pretty familiar if you saw my 21.5 inch 4K iMac I just did last week. Uh, obviously this is scale up to size. So the first thing we need to do here is pull the tab along the top so we can open up the box. Flipping the box forward, we'll find our very large and very heavy 27 inch iMac cocooned in lots of styrofoam. Now the first thing I wanna pull out here is the accessory pack. That includes our new Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse 2. You can also replace or add the Magic Trackpad 2. Now I've already covered those accessories in detail in previous videos, which I'll leave linked in the description below. So of course we have our Magic Keyboard wrapped in this sort of frosted plastic. It's nice, lightweight, and ultra thin. It also has an internal rechargeable battery, so we no longer need to replace the batteries like we had to with the previous generation. Generation. We also have our Magic Mouse 2, which again has an internal rechargeable battery and is charged via a lightning connector. Of course, we also get a lightning cable for recharging those accessories. So again, all you have to do is connect your accessories to your iMac and it'll charge it for you. We also have our literature packet, which includes a quick start guide, some warranty information, and a set of Apple stickers. We also get a microfiber cleaning cloth for cleaning the glass display. Now, interestingly, this is no longer Apple branded as it usually has been in the past. Now we're left with a styrofoam cocooned iMac, which we have to lift up here. It's kind of heavy, so you may want to do this on the floor instead of a table like I'm doing here. So let's go ahead and pull that up and get the box out of the way. First, I want to take a look at the power cord, which is nestled into a compartment behind the iMac in one of the styrofoam pieces. So you just pull up the tab and inside you'll find your power cable, which will connect later. Next up, we need to remove the styrofoam segments protecting the iMac. And of course, beneath that is even more packaging. So the first thing I want to do here is remove the styrofoam envelope. I just have to peel the tabs along the back. And once I get the flaps out of the way, I can go ahead and pull up the sheet in one piece. But of course, there is more where that came from. So we have some plastic covering the pedestal. So again, the iMac is kind of heavy, so you have to be careful here when you lift it up to remove the plastic sheet. Now the iMac is also wrapped in plastic. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the plastic up along the side so we can remove this neatly. Now the 27 inch iMac has a RAM door, so you can upgrade the RAM unlike the 21.5 inch 4K iMac. So that's also covered in a plastic sheet, which I'm gonna go ahead and peel off here as well. So once I get all the tabs peeled off along the sides, I can go ahead and remove the sheet in one piece piece. So there we go, our 27 inch iMac looks a lot like the previous generation. In fact, the design hasn't changed at all. It's all internal and it's all in the display's quality. But of course, it's a really nice looking computer with a razor thin edge, which is made out of one piece of milled aluminum. Of course, it bows out toward the center here for all of the internals. And then you can see it meets toward the center at the hinge. So this hinge is spring loaded because of the weight of the iMac itself it has to be spring loaded to maintain tension. But of course, you have a good amount of articulation here to pivot the display to whatever you want. So along the back toward the top, you'll find your Apple logo. That's part of the Wi-Fi system. So Wi-Fi needs radio transparency to work through the metal body and the black plastic Apple logo is there for that. And just above that, we'll find the set of dual microphones etched into the metal. You'll find one facing toward the top along the edge of the iMac and another one facing the rear. In terms of our IO, it's basically the same. We have a headphone jack that supports optical output if you have the right cable. Of course, we have an SD card slot. We get four USB 3.0 ports, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, and a gigabit ethernet port. So as you can see, no USB type C for this generation yet. 
And on the other side, you'll find your rear facing power button, which is concave, so it's easy to find when you reach around the computer to power it on. Now tucked behind the hinge, we'll find a lot going on here. So of course we have our exhaust fin for keeping the iMac cool. The inlets are on the bottom of the iMac, which we'll take a look in just a minute. Now before I do anything else, I want to swap out the eight gigs of RAM for 32 gigs of RAM. So I was able to buy it for less than $200 through Amazon. And of course I'll leave links in the description below. So if you want to buy your own RAM, you can do that. Now in order to get access to the RAM, I'll have to lay the computer flat. I'm going to use a piece of fabric in order to protect the glass display. So in order to eject the RAM door, you just have to push on this recessed button. So in this case, I'm just using the corner of an Apple TV remote to do it. And I can go ahead and pull off that RAM door. So the RAM door itself does have some brief instructions on the inside to show you how to open up the RAM tray. So the RAM trays are spring loaded. So all we have to do is spread out the clips and it pops forward. This allows us to just simply pull out the two four gig sticks that came installed. And all we have to do is install the eight gig RAM sticks in all four slots and make Make sure they're perfectly seated and secure and pop the tray back down and we can go ahead and pop the door back on. Now keen observers will notice that I'm actually installing slower RAM. This is 1600 megahertz instead of 1867 megahertz like the chips I'm removing. But once those kits are readily available, I'll update the description with the new links. So on the front of the computer, we have this edge to edge glass panel covering this very large display. Now that glass panel does have an anti-reflective coating, so it does control some of the glare and reflection you get with this display, but it's still a glossy display, so you'll still see some of it. Toward the top center, you'll find your 720p FaceTime HD camera, pretty much the same we've had for a while now. It's flanked on either side by an ambient light sensor and an LED indicator. Down below, we'll find the familiar iMac chin, and toward the center, we'll find our Apple logo. Now if you look along the bottom edge, you'll find this razor thin edge and drilled within that edge is the speaker outlets and the air intake vents. And again, it's a really slick design even though most people don't get to see it. The speakers themselves sound actually pretty good. So you get good bass and dynamic range and I really have no need to add external speakers to the system. So I'm pretty happy overall with the sound quality of these built-in speakers. So what does performance look like on the top end iMac for 2015? So in terms of our Geekbench scores, we saw a single core score of 4520 and a multi-core score of 17426. Now, if we compare this to a similarly specced iMac from last year, that scored 4223 on the single core and 1640 on the multi-core score. So that is a fairly modest gain here. In terms of our graphics performance, taking a look at Cinebench, our OpenGL score was 106 frames per second and the CPU score was 870. So we saw modest gains here from the previous generation, which saw an OpenGL score of 103 frames per second and the CPU score of around 729 CBs. Now in terms of our disk speed, this is where we see more significant gains with the new Fusion Drive. So the write speed was around 700 and the read speed was around 1900. That's not as fast as Apple's faster SSDs, but this is pretty good for the Fusion Drive. So if you look at the previous generation, uh, the Fusion Drive saw a write speed of 300 and a read speed of around 600. So we're seeing double or triple the performance of the previous Fusion Drive. Now for me, the main reason to upgrade from the previous generation really is the new display. So once again, we have a 5K display with the same resolution, 5120 by 2880. That's good for 217 pixels per inch. The big difference is the new backlight for this IPS panel. So the backlight goes from blue LEDs with a yellow phosphor to red and green LEDs, which are able to produce a wider color gamut. So you see more vivid colors and you lose that yellow cast that was kind of a problem with the previous generation, although it's not a huge gain here and it's actually kind of hard to show you on video. Uh, but generally speaking, the new display on the 5K iMac looks a lot clearer with clearer whites and more vivid colors. And generally speaking, it's a really pleasant display to use, but it's not a night and day difference. And unfortunately, despite Skylake, which could support it, the iMac doesn't have the IO to support target display mode. So this cannot be used as an external display. But of course, one of the fantastic things about a 5K display is that you have so much resolution to work with, you can preview full 4K video with enough room for the editor. In fact, this is what I use for my main production and it really comes in handy. So there you go, that is the updated 5K iMac for 2015, which brings us a much better looking display and some improved specs. And of course, that better looking display is now available at a much lower price point. So that's gonna do for me in this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know and I'll see you again in the next video. Oh,